Today's Smoshcast is brought to you by Harry's. A ghost is in my room and it's banging on the ceiling. That's scary. But what's scarier is <laughs> with aliens, they're like physical things. Hauntings are scary. So even if it's like an Ian Hecox just coming to like give you tiny forehead kisses in the morning. Yeah. He's still a shadow figure. That's, yeah, and he's still, still a shadow figure. I don't want that. Flying saucers could be experimental crafts that were made by humans. They just use the cover of aliens or it's unexplained. We don't know what it is to just cover for like an actual just government made project. My mom thought, hmm, I'm going to take my 10 or 11 year old son to okay. see the movie Signs. And oh. so my dad jumps out of my room <laughs> and he doesn't say boo. And he doesn't say, what he says is aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and I peed a little bit. Wait, <clears throat> I'm ready. You had to get the pre-pod the pre -pod cough. I can't promise it won't happen again. Why? I smoke weed. Oh, gross. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know I'm awful. You're f disgusting. You still <laughs> smoke it? Ew. <laughs> no, I just put it in my butt. We all, yeah, it's, it's all, um, Suppository? It's suppository for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You make fun, but that's a real thing. Oh, yeah. Sure. If you ever want to get your low intestines like blitzed. Yeah. Just. <laughs> I mean, I know a jackass did that with with like beer. They did like the, the butt chug, no. which is actually a really great way to die of alcohol poisoning because your uh, membranes in the colon or whatnot will absorb the alcohol but it bypasses your liver. It's oh, so just... you just straight up get poisoned. And then uh -huh. you can donate your liver. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So, so if you plan on dying from alcohol poisoning, just do it that way. Yeah. So please don't put alcohol in your butt. <laughs> anyway, hello. <laughs> um, and, and it's and it's amazing um, that we're talking about that because that's exactly what we're talking about today, mm -hmm. which is spooky ghosts and goblins oh, and oh, aliens oh, oh, oh. and cryptids. I don't even know what that is, but we're going to find out today. Yes, you will. Today I'm joined by Smosh Social Masters, Tommy Bo and Rachel. Evans. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. I don't know if I should. I just never said your full name before. I don't think anybody has. Ra 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 Ragel? Ragel? Ragel Evgorns. Evgorns. Yeah. My name backwards is Lakar Snave. That's oh, fun, right? Sims. Really? Yeah. I love the Sims. So that's what I chant if I want to get your ghost to, In the mirror? to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lakar Snave just straight up sounds like a Lord of the Rings character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the name I dance under. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the reason the reason that we brought um, Rachel and Tommy here today for this spooktacular spooky ghosts and goblins and aliens and cryptids episode is because um, uh, you guys could pro you guys probably identify as as believers, true believers of the ghosts and goblins, or maybe just ghosts and or something like that, and aliens and such and so forth. You Correct. Bet. All of the so forths. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Et cetera. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I should probably mention this is Rachel's first ever introduction of any kind, I guess, on on Smosh. Yeah. 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 I try to keep it behind the camera. Yeah. Well, guess what? Here I am. Here, Here you are. are. Yeah. But you but this isn't like the first time that you've done like a podcast. You had like your own oh, podcast, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I had a I was a YouTuber for a few years on uh, the channel I created was called Snarled, which was I did a ghost and serial killer show on that. And then I'm on I'm right now currently on the Travel Channel um, for the past three seasons a show called Paranormal Caught on Camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so so you're you're deep in yeah. deep in the stuff. You can give some insider yeah. info. Yeah, basically people send in clips and I have to be like, that was a residual haunting. Oh, that was a duende. A and duende. It, yeah, that's a cryptid. How, how much okay. of it is information that's already floating around in your brain and how much of it is, I need to research that floaty shape? No, 150% is already still there. I, I The show that I did on Snarled was called Dark Five and mm -hmm. I did somewhere around like 100 episodes of that. Uh, and every episode was a different spooky thing. I mean, there are some things that I've had to brush up on like particle physics, mm. but- um, <laughs> Sorry. That <laughs> You know, you're like, you're like, I just had to brush up on like this extreme science. Oh, it, it hurts my brain every day. And I don't know what I'm talking about, but mm -hmm. I can try. I can do my best. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so how did you even 
get get into this then what made you what made you go oh okay ghosts are real and now i want to know more about them i think similar to tommy actually like haven't heard your story. I almost touched your hand. <gasps> Stop. I'm so scared. Um, I had. A, I grew up in a haunted house. Like mm. I grew up in a very old, not like one that people set up for Halloween, like a one with ghosts. Very old, like 1800s Texas house uh, where people used to do under the table surgeries uh, in the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bullet hole in one of the windows. Like very well, usually, surgery. usually you don't do surgery with guns. I, that's why it was so Texas. chaotic. Yeah. Texas. Oh, that's Thanks true. Yeah. <laughs> you can fix anything with a gun in Texas. Uh-huh. That's facts. That's true. That's true. Uh, I've Yeah, I'm not going to tell that story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when I was a kid, I mean, me and my sister had very similar experiences with a couple locations in the house. But the uh, big one was I, my room was the uh, cigar room. So my room back when it was first built was meant for gentlemen's clubs Mm. and uh, card games and cigars. When I was about six years old, I, well, I had an experience with my grandfather when he died. He like showed up on my bed because he, I slept over at his house I left his house and then he died. Whoa. Um, And then I took a nap when I got back to my house and I thought he was on the bed. And so I went into my parents' room and I was like, where's where's grandpa? Like, why did he come and hang out and then leave? And they're like, oh, honey, we have some bad news for you. Uh, But the experience in my room was like, that's when I learned to be comfortable with being scared. I was, I mean, because life is scary. Like I'm, whatever. So Mm -hmm. I'm six years old. I'm sitting in my bed and I see these huge like, faces like the best way i can describe it is as if we were playing guess who and it's just like this caricature of a face and one of them was like big and bald and had a cigar hanging out of his mouth the other guy had these big round glasses and this bushy hair and then there's another guy that was another bald guy but very very slim and i was just staring at them talk to each other like they were not and they were like in a semicircle above my bed and they weren't interacting with me at all it's like i wasn't there and i was just like watching them I guess I screamed and my parents came into my room and they're like, what's wrong? And I was like, nothing. I'm just hanging out. Like (laughs) I would scream if I saw some big floating heads above me. Yeah, it was very spooky. It was very spooky. So that's when I first um, became comfortable with the idea that like there are things that we don't understand and can't explain. Mm -hmm. And then I was just always a real freak. Like I was just always a weirdo. Growing up, I didn't, you know, I have friends, Um, Uh but yeah, I do. And then (laughs) I did, Uh, but it it kind of lends itself. Like when you are other than, it lends yourself to be a little bit more open to things that maybe other people might poo-poo. Yeah, like ghost friends. Like ghost friends, Mm -hmm. exactly. Or ghost mates available on YouTube. T-Bang. Yeah, my uh, favorite film. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I did just watch it, actually. Did you? Mm-hmm. Did you feel like it represented ghosts well? I thought it was a very fun representation of ghost activity. Did you did... scream and have your mom come in to check on you? Well, every time. Yeah, every I, time yeah. I watched watch the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Was T-Pain not the best part of that movie? Oh, absolutely. He's great. It, like, He's so good. But I love T-Pain. He's pretty amazing. Yeah. He's pretty great. He was drinking something the whole, <laughs> the whole time we were filming, and he During just got- ghost mates? <laughs> yeah, and and he and he just only got better as as the hours went on. Okay, so so haunted house under the table surgery room, yeah, cigar room, yes, spooky, misogynistic men. Sm- I don't know if I don't want to put them on that. Okay. Put that on them. Okay, mm. well they, they probably can't hear you. They're still stuck in. The yeah, house, and right? from what I understand, it was the late eighteen hundreds. I'm sure they hated me. You know, probably. everything about me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Tommy. Yes. So she said you had a similar introduction to spooky ghosts. She, yeah, I mean, yeah. When I was like my my house wasn't so immediately haunted, uh, right? Okay. It's, it's it's not like I had like so so many visuals to do. But there is a there was like always a, you know, a little feeling of like being watched and it's like my house is one of the older ones in South Florida. It's from like the 60s or something. So there's some history. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. think anyone died there, but I don't know. Probably uh, did. Probably. Florida. Is the yeah. South just more haunted? Yes, yes. It is. Yeah. Any place with, well, I mean the South, any place that has like more war mm-hmm. um, and contention mm-hmm. is going to be uh, more haunted. And it's not just for the obvious reasons of like people died here. 
it's also an energy thing. I guess there's probably just war and contention everywhere, though, right? Like, where's kind where's of. A, Where's a, what do you think is the least, sorry, we'll get back to your story, Tom, no, because I don't fine. want to tangent too much. No, I love this. What do you think is the least haunted place? Is, Sweden. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, these cute Wait, little- Wait, the home of the Vikings? Yeah. You think that all that- I don't think they're hanging we're around. We're not saying not haunted, we're saying least haunted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Least haunted, okay. Mm-hmm. I you feel- think they're not hanging around. You think they're they're pretty content? Yeah, because it's usually what? Like, like suffering, extreme emotions, crazy weird deaths stuff like that that like imprints on a yeah. place right and it's also the willingness of the people to believe in it right and i know that that's where this all becomes like Whoa. but yeah but uh you know it's an energy thing and mm. so if people are more uh, about that ghost life then there's going to be more ghost sightings and mm. m- more uh yeah ghosts mm-hmm. in general yeah probably. so you think the swedes just don't care I think they probably have more like of a culture, like that's like a it. neutral culture. Yeah, where they're just like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like no, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, you're Swedish. Look at your hair. I'm not. Oh yeah, I'm Swedish now. Yeah, <laughs> I've adopted. I've adopted their culture. You'll kill James Bond soon enough. I promise. Yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> okay. waiting for my hairless cat. <laughs> you're waiting for it. You're like, yeah, it's, it's coming in the mail. Yeah. And I'm working on getting like a really dope scar that goes down one eye. So sorry. So I was I was tangenting. I'm so sorry, Tommy. Yeah. So tell oh. me about your. Well, it's like me grow, growing up. I didn't have a lot of like ghost things. Like I mean, I saw I had a, a nutcracker that my mom got me. She, it was cute. Every every Christmas, my mom would get me nutcrackers <laughs> and she would hide them around the house and I would find them and it was cute. But one time, no. I put the nutcracker in the middle of the room no. and I like went to the bathroom and then when I came back, the little mouth thing was open and then it closed. So it was just like a little like movement thing. But that was enough for me to go like, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. So then that kind of like stuck with me. And then moving forward, I haven't really had many ghost adventures except for the current apartment that I'm in, which I've talked about on the podcast before, but. Go on. Go ahead and you want me to go? Go ahead and say it again. Yeah, okay. because I, I haven't heard this. Yeah, refresh yeah. it for the audience. Okay, hi audience, are you hi. refreshed? Okay, so in my apartment, there are, what? Rachel, I'm your so hair. I'm so sorry. I told you <laughs> this is a grudge thing. <laughs> this you. is a spooky <laughs> grudge thing. Hair keeps I'm like, coming out of Tommy's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> it's me. Uh, or is it the ring? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is it the ring or the grudge? It's my it's life. It's both. It's just it's ring has the. Res- What's has up the... with J Hor and just hair coming out of people's mouth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So basically. I'm trying to like find like the best place to start. So basically, did it arrive and, with that horse of yours that you have? You know, maybe. So I have a I like I like scary artifacts and that's just kind of me bringing it on to myself. Yeah. Um, one time I was in New York and I was walking down a street and um there was a painting of of this this weird like faded painting of this Chinese woman with like bags on the floor and like a house in the background, but it's like half finished. And I was like, she's trapped in it. that. She's trapped in that painting. That's what I'm saying. I there's so, it, I'm like, there's something inside it. Anyway, I saw it and I was like, I have to get this painting. Don't know why. I was just drawn to it and I bought it. And then it's been with me ever since. And it's probably it's the, the first it's, bad sign. Yeah. Well, that's the probably the cursed <laughs> item. Anyway, so I, <laughs> I'm in my kitchen. My roommate, by the way, has experienced everything with me. So I'm not alone in this. Okay. I'm not like, you know, yeah. it's not just my peripherals acting up. My garbage can lid, it was one of those swingy guys. So every once in a while, it would just go, and I would be like, okay, well, no one's throwing anything away. Mm-hmm. And that would happen for a while. And my my roommate, Brandon, and I were just like, okay, that's, that's a little strange. And then we started seeing, again, peripherals, right? When you're looking at something for so long, your peripherals start to like not interact anymore or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you can start to see things in your peripheral, mm-hmm. sure. So in the corner of my apartment, which you can see the staircase if you go onto Smosh's Instagram and you look at that reel that I made for registering to vote, this little staircase is in the corner of my apartment. And when you're at the sink, you can see it out of the corner of your eye. And it goes up to this halfway point and then goes further up. In that halfway point, perfectly spooky, swear to God. No. Woman, five foot five, five seven, something like that, shadow for person would just be standing there. And I so die. I know. <laughs> so that die. so that was like that was like there. And I was like, every once in a while I'd be like, like, you know, dart over and look, gone. Fine. And I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Then I had another friend over and my roommate Brandon was there, and I was talking to my friend, and I was like, you know, 
I just want to know, have you ever seen? And he's like, the woman that stands on your staircase? Yes, I have. And I was like, Ooh! so that confirmed it. And I think again about the, once you believe it, it's real. Then I was like, oh no, no. So the event, the big event, the big poltergeist that event. That wasn't it? That the wasn't apparition it. you saw no. wasn't it? Okay. So Jeez. It's, like, it's, like two, it's like two in the morning. I don't need to get into the details about the vent, but basically there was a sound that sounded like something was banging in the walls. The way my apartment is built, there's no way something could be stuck in a vent where the sound was coming from because there is no air conditioner vent in that area. The sound was like rattling and crazy. And my roommate texts me and he's like, what is that? And I'm like, I don't know. And so like, I look out, it's nothing there. There's nothing there. So I just sit in my bed and I'm like, I hate this. Mm -hmm. uh, the sound travels from the corner. Again, not an air vent. It's just kind of like a, like a kind of sound, just like a pattering, thumping, couldn't constant. that just be like a mouse or a rat in, no. the, in the wall? It's, if the rat was like covered doing in parkour, <laughs> parkour and just like going like thunk, 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 thunk. So it travels to the center of the room, of my room. I live, my two roommates live upstairs, I'm downstairs, so I'm alone. Uh, the sound stops, I take a breath. I'm like, okay, that was crazy. And then my bathroom door does that classic like thing and like slowly opens up. And I couldn't fall asleep that night. Next day, me and my roommate take Sage and Palo Santo, go into every corner of the apartment, and, and I was like, okay. And, and because I'm like, if I'm ever gonna come in contact with a ghost, I'm gonna treat it like a person. So yeah. I was like, hey, so you gotta get out. This kind of sucks. And so I was like doing that. Next morning after cleansing the apartment, the picture frames on my uh, living room wall were all on the ground. Yeah, you can't treat something like a person if it's not a person. I know. That's awful. That's my story. That is wow. awful. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, that's terrible. There's mm -hmm. so many elements to this. So this is ex so this is like what happens Please. on the show. Is yes. People send it in and I go, okay, well, let's break this up. Yeah. There's so many elements to this that mm -hmm. make it not a traditional like just ghost haunting that I'm like, you need to get rid of that picture immediately. Or it's you. Um, it's probably me. Yeah, it honestly might be you. Because me. like poltergeist and things like that and like succubus spirit, especially mm -hmm. if you feel yourself being a little bit more tired. Oh, or all the time. Something like that is something called a succubus spirit. And their intention, the point of their existence is to live off of your energy. Oh my God, I have a dependent. That's so sweet. <laughs> Tax purposes is great. Okay. But uh, but also Tommy's an editor. Editors are always tired. That's sure, yes. sure. But you know, That's you also true. know yourself and mm -hmm. I hopefully don't work you the same way that, you know, you, you could possibly be worked. So, sure. I mean, I from what it sounds like, uh -huh. the appar the full body apparition yeah. That's is gnarly. not it's not normal. Okay. It wasn't like solid. It, it's very, but you it's saw very it. shadowy. Yeah, but, but you yeah, saw no, it. it's an apparition. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. saw that it was a woman. Who else yeah. saw it? My just my friend that had come over, and he and he's oh, been over to my apartment often. So he he didn't. We had never talked about the person on the stairs before. So he just. But he, he had seen it at some other time. Yeah, he has, and I guess didn't bring it up because he like. How could he not bring that up? I know. I, don't, I, know. I know. Like, I what know. is that? What know. is that, friend? Maybe uh, he brought it. Maybe he's. Maybe, maybe he it's feels his, bad. Like, Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk to you about shaving your damn face. And what better way to shave your face than with the Harry's razor? Yeah, that's right. This Smoshcast is sponsored by Harry's. They wanted to sell products that they'd be proud of, so they raised a bunch of money to buy a razor factory in Germany that's been making razors for like 100 years. They source their steel from Sweden and own the entire manufacturing process that allows them to keep the prices low. And new US customers can redeem a Harry's trial set by going to harrys.com slash smosh. You'll get everything you need to start for just $3. And I actually got that kit. They sent it to me over the weekend and I used it to trim up my beard. So it looks all fresh and nice. These parts feel like a baby's bottom. So if you guys want to feel like a baby's bottom like I do right now, new US customers can redeem a trial of Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash mosh for $3. You'll get a five blade razor featuring their new sharper blades, a weighted ergonomic handle, foaming shave gel with aloe, and a trial travel cover to protect your blade when you're on the go. So just go to harrys.com slash S-M-O-S-H to redeem your trial offer today. <laughs> so keep, I'm but, so interested in- So there's okay. so many elements to this. First of all, what the first story gave me pause because that's 
object manipulation, yes. toy manipulation specifically is the scariest part of haunting for me because when something is trying to manipulate something as innocent as there are going to be so many people in the audience being like, who is this bitch? Um, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, there's with the toy manipulation, yeah. that, that's an exact juxtap juxtaposition of innocence. Okay. So the idea of something going into a children's toy okay. to try to communicate is nefarious. That was ages ago. That is, Are we sure it's the same person? No, but pers that was very person. scary. Okay, that's yeah, a very yeah. scary thing to yes. me, especially okay. if it's something to do with Christmas. Like I'm Jewish, so I don't believe in like demonology, mm -hmm. but um, with like nefarious spirit, they will use your icons against you. They'll use your tools against you so that they can better communicate and make you more afraid. Gotcha. So, uh, anything, why would they benefit from you being afraid? Because just if it's a succubus, succubus. yeah, ah. it's supposed to make you afraid. Of, or if it's an if it's like a Loki type spirit, if it's like a if it's a nefarious spirit, which most people or some people Did you would say call Loki. No, or like Loki. Loki. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, like fun trickster guy. Oh, got it. Um, I feel like I would be that. I would be a fun trickster spirit. I mean, oh, that's in the works for you once yeah. you pass. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna be so f annoying when I I'm a ghost. <laughs> you can, be like, wake up. <laughs> but that's the thing too is that like hauntings are scary so even if it's like an Ian Hecox just coming to like give you tiny forehead kisses in the morning yeah. he's still a shadow figure that's, yeah he's still, still a shadow figure I don't want that like he's gonna be terrified but with yours like first of all don't take artifacts don't do it it's not worth it especially if you're going on like a hunt <laughs> Or I'm, an investigation. I'm screwed. Yeah. Just don't. If you ever go on an investigation, if I you won't. Ever, you don't want to? No. Oh, okay. No, my helm is enough for me. I'm going to take Kevin. Yeah, take him. No, <laughs> it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's a good time. It's a good time. But Kevin, seriously, don't take anything from that investigation because it'll follow you back. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. You yeah, know, so that yeah. kind of sounds like that to the, me. It's the picture, probably. If you need a shaman, let me know. The the sage isn't going to do anything. I'll po I'll post the picture on my Instagram or something when this comes out, so someone, anyone who wants to see the terror, it's a it's a bad picture. It look it's scary. It's scary. <laughs> it's a scary picture. I had a I had like this like 1920s um, uh, lobotomy needle that I bought. Oh. Uh yeah. Used. I, yes, used. Mm. Uh, had like all this dried blood on it and stuff, and mm. um, cool. it was so it was very cool. Yeah. Do it. Wait, why was there dried blood left on it? It was stained, like it was rusted and stained. Uh, from being inside <laughs> a noggin. Yeah, yeah, from being inside a noggin. It was back before All they right. did the eyeball way of it too, so it was real, real brain stuff. Oh, that because they used to drill. They right? used to drill. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then there was, um, yeah, okay. But I, I, <laughs> I took it home. I took it home from the Oddities Museum, and for the next two weeks, I couldn't sleep. I don't know if that uh, was in my head or I just couldn't sleep, so I took it back. I was like, no, I'm not even going to test this. Makes sense. I have a question for Ian. Uh, uh, would you consider yourself a skeptic within this, or somebody who is open to it but you're not necessarily convinced i mean like i'm i'm still like obviously I'm, I'm still very skeptical but i mean i know somebody somebody like that i know very close seem to have a lot of very believable interactions and sightings and i know they had no reason to like make things up and i mean i i believe that there's i believe that there's something mm -hmm. i don't know what it is and i i think that there's there's definitely something like whether it's I don't know, energy or or ghosts or spirits or there there's something like there there has to be a reason why we've seen or felt these things and mm -hmm. it's not and it can't just be chalked up to you know some neuron firing in the way that it wasn't supposed to or right yeah. you know like you my brain you witnessed <laughs> you witnessed physical things moving in ways that they shouldn't be mm -hmm. yeah so I mean what's what's the explanation for that. I don't have I don't have an explanation Could for it. Could be multiverse stuff if you want to get into that. Sure. <laughs> I mean just in Open up in that life. can of worms. Yeah. And also like I've just I've just heard more and more stories. Gosh, I heard this this one story. I just I just looked it up because I was um listening to this podcast and they did this one episode on the uh on the first recorded haunting in the US. Have you ever heard about this one? No. The one that was in Maine? In 1799, some uh, traveling preacher recorded this instance that had, he had uh, 31 eyewitness testimonies. Okay. Wow. And so basically, I won't bother telling the whole story, but basically like this guy's wife dies and then her ghost comes back, takes shape of his wife, 
she's talking, tells him that he should like get get married with this woman who was 15 at the time. So it was a little sketchy and obviously people didn't approve of that. So this ghost is a little weird. <laughs> um, but basically like she would appear down in, in his cellar. So he was like, he was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. It's my, it's the ghost of my wife. So he starts bringing people down there and like sometimes she would show up and she would talk to them and she oh would God. talk about like a wide range of things like about like religion and, and like other stuff. This sounds like the coolest parlor trick. I, I, I you know. know all I can think about is like, so where did they put the mirrors? Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> the smoke. At first the apparition was a mere mass of light, then grew into personal form about as tall as myself. We stood in two ranks about four or five feet apart. Between these ranks, she slowly passed and repassed so that any of us could have ha handled her. At least the personal form became shapeless, expanded every way, and then vanished in a moment. Sounds about right. <laughs> so so then I remember like later in the story, she she people obviously thought that she was like up to something, mm -hmm. like that it was some kind of uh trick she said claiming to be the spirit of nelly butler the ghost sought to orchestrate the marriage of nelly butler's former husband 29 year old george butler to lydia Bla blaisdell who was 15 years old at the time get out of there lydia hey man 1700s they're crazy <laughs> the way you're phrasing this is the ghost took the form of blank is this leading to this ghost is not the wife because the way this is phrased is like I don't know. Okay. It said that I the spirit he exhumed the body or something to prove that she was dead. Oh, yeah. That's what I would it do. It said the spirit was relentless, visiting multiple times and answering personal questions <laughs> to prove its identity. There's no way. She's um, like, I hope this email finds you well. Yeah. <laughs> and then it said on, on nice. <laughs> May 28, 1800, Lydia and Joy George were married on Butler Point. The next day, the ghost appeared and prophesied that Lydia would bear one child and die soon after. This prophecy, which came to fruition 10 months later, no. echoed the sad fate of Nellie Butler, who died of childbirth when she was 22 years old. Wow. Maybe because her hips weren't developed yet. Mm. Um, that's awful. They could probably gimmick something to fool you, but the fact the prophecy. that- prophecy. Yeah, yeah. That's where it got me, because I was like, sounds like a dude just wanted to marry a teenager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then, like, how do you explain it passing through people? The It's just so weird. I've never, not never, but I haven't, usually when you hear about ghosts communicating, it's through like EVP, through broken language. It's not- Yeah, apparently she was having just full-blown conversations. <laughs> Wow, that and is then, interesting. And then <laughs> it said the last time the ghost was reported in Solvin was in mid-August when it followed a procession of 48 people from the Blaisdell house because everyone was like, oh, this must be a trick that you are you have some kind of trap door here in yeah. the, in the okay. cellar. So she's like, all right, f follow me. So She the ghost? She yeah. the ghost yeah. said that. So she said, uh, <laughs> I think it was, I think she said like, okay, meet me over at this house which is a half mile away. And its agenda was to confront a skeptic and show as capable of appearing outside the home. Whoa, Nelly. whatever Whatever Nellie tapped into after dying is what, that's the kind of haunt I want. Where I'm yeah. just like, yeah. hey, you wanna play Mario Kart? <laughs> I don't want to freak you out or anything, but yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I'm fully here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it said, at the end of the vigil, the ghost appeared before the crowd Stop. in the field oh, and Jesus. then vanished from the town for good. <gasps> Oh, oh, why don't we get that anymore? I just got full body chills. I did too. I'm just just so the weird. imagery of like a very small ghost in a very big field from far away being like, <gasps> and then just like gone. Ooh, ooh. I, I'm still so scared. I'm still so scared of ghosts. Same. You know? And it's, I think it's because you don't, because it's an unknown, we yeah. don't know what they're capable of. Yes. Right? It's yeah. like, I don't know what the rules are. Mm. Yeah, just the more the more videos I watch, of people sending me their stuff, the more I'm like, well, first of all, you become attunely aware that like, yeah, you should be a skeptic. Everyone should be a skeptic because you should try to prove it with science. Mm. And then once you can't do that, explore it. But also there are some things happening to people around the world right now that is horrifying. Can like, I, Can I get a best of? Oh God, I mean, it's hard to, but there's the scariest stuff for me is the cryptid stuff. 
Okay. Because which you don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Cryptids are um, basically like evolutionary creatures. Like the idea of it is that they are animals or animal adjacent. So like Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster, uh, the duende, which is a Spanish or Filipino folklore, a, a, a little troll that steals kids and stuff. Chupacabra. Chupacabra. That's a that's a cryptid. Um, that's what scares me the most because there's a element of it that it it it. It is science because you're looking at something that is unidentifiable by the human eye to be anything that we have identified as animal. But it exists and it's there and it's on camera. But we haven't found its bones. But what is it? Yeah. We found we have found cryptid bones, but not like Bigfoot bones or anything like that. Yeah. But like no. what what kind of bones? Um, there's been like sea creature bones that we've found that have been like but those are just dinosaur stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for me, that when it becomes real, that's when it gets scary. I mean, we know more about space than we know about the ocean. So the fact that there are creatures that live in an environment that is literally alien to us, that's yeah. aliens. That's aliens. I mean, that's aliens. Sure, sure. And so, I mean, there's a world in which they can come into our our hemis, our world, our land, our space, uh, and we just have no idea what they are. And then, you know, you get into the fun kind of idea of mysticism and there are creatures in the woods and mm -hmm. that's just fun. You know, yeah. that's just a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. But well, when you see a creature and you're like, I can't, I can't tell you what that is. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't know everything. And like you said, there's a lot about in the ocean that we don't we don't know. So well, they could be monsters. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Could be a monster under your bed. <laughs> uh, well, we actually asked you guys <gasps> on Twitter a series of questions. We asked if you guys believe in ghosts. And actually, quite an overwhelming majority of you, uh, 60 to 40 about, said that you believe in ghosts. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's actually, I'm actually surprised. I feel like it hasn't always been like that. And, but maybe it's just because of like social media and people are able to share their stories mm -hmm. easier. Do you believe in aliens? Huge majority said yes. Hell yeah. And mm -hmm. Kevin like, said no. Kevin? You don't, but hold on. Kevin, you don't believe, you don't in, believe aliens? in aliens? I mean, I believe aliens exist out there. If they found their way, there's, I feel oh, like I could get oh, that. oh. <laughs> you don't believe that they're, that, that aliens have made contact. I don't believe they're just hanging out. You're a Fermi God. paradox Fermi boy. paradox boy. Mm. Fermi paradox boy. You're wrong, but Call me cool. out on the podcast, by the way. Public platforms. Um, <laughs> well, you explained yourself. Also, Kevin said that he doesn't believe in ghosts. <laughs> Am I gonna have to dox you? So he's Do I have just, to go? <laughs> so he's just sitting back there, just like, ah, I hate this episode. <laughs> ah. I actually love this episode. I love it. <laughs> yes, but you are wrong. Um, no. <laughs> Very wrong. I mean, they got it. I mean, aliens got to exist. I don't know if they visited here. Just for fun, I voted yes and they're here, but because we gave three options on that was yes, no, or yes, and they're here. I think they're, they're here. here. Yeah. They're here. Yeah. They're here. You I think they're, they're here? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you think, yeah. what, what do you think is in Area 51? Oh, I had an interview with an ex Area 51 uh, guard who was on, like, had like fifth level security clearance. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, how I spend my free time. Yeah, they're real and they're working with our government. I know I sound crazy. I, that's the thing. There's no way not don't to sound think, crazy. Don't right. you think we would be like like leagues ahead of other countries if we were truly working with aliens? I don't think that we're necessarily actively working with aliens, but I do think that alien technology, like we have like borrowed from alien technology, specifically sure. like cloaking and like ship cloaking and um, our communication devices. So, yeah, I mean, you know. You don't think that was just through, like, just a reasonable progression in technology? Like, we had. Could be. Yeah. Like when we, you say communication devices, do you mean our, our little like phones? Like cell phones. What a weird way to say cell phone, huh? Our little phones. <laughs> like you don't you don't think we got you don't think we got to cell phone communication without aliens? N not necessarily saying that, but there's um, no there's, shame. I know there's so much shame. What no. are you talking about? Th this is only shame because there's literally no way to talk about this stuff without sounding crazy. But mm -hmm. then eventually, like what happened a couple months ago when the CIA uncovered documents That's... proving that aliens exist and proving that we uh, have created more or less teleportation through particle physics. It's hard to say like, okay, you- Wait, wait, hold on. 
You can't just you can't just you can't just randomly say teleportation and just keep well, moving on in your sentence. It's casual. And so okay. I believe it. So basically, the there was um, a document that was after the alien document. There was a document uncovered by the CIA that, or um, declassified, I should say, by the CIA that uh, talks about uh, holographic and mirror theory. Hypothesizes mm-hmm. that we are living in somewhat of a simulation. Like there might be half truths to what our physical world is but the other half of those truths like time and space and stuff like that um, are created through a hologram and this was actually proven by medical science because uh, something like five to ten I'm sorry I don't know the actual date but five to ten years ago there was a woman who lost half of her hemisphere half of her brain hemisphere uh, in a terrible accident they recreated it through hologram and now she or through holograph and she is now able to live a full life using the full function of her brain because half of her brain the right half believes that there is a left hemisphere there. Is that what you mean by holograph? That is, is what that... I mean by holograph, yeah. And that, that kind of ties back into like ghost surreal if you believe into it. Exactly. Into it? You into know what it. I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because you are manifesting. That's why like- uh, You lost me fully. How? What part? <laughs> With well, the there's like part? There's like phantom limb syndrome. There's like stuff like that where it's like your brain just kind of like- Auto-completes. Because really it's only your brain talking to itself. Right. So- yeah. There was a study, I watched a documentary about it, where a guy was missing a limb, I think it was like an arm or a leg, and in, and he had an itch on it. Like his body was like, it's itchy, mm-hmm. but he yeah. couldn't scratch it. So to yeah. fix it, they placed a mirror down the center, had him close one eye, and then look at it. So to his brain, he saw the other half oh. of his body. Yeah. Then he reached down and scratched his right leg, and he felt it on his left leg. Holographs. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's pretty crazy. We also don't understand our brains we completely, don't. right? We don't. Like, but that was not that was not a function. I mean, it was a function of our brain because that's our home base, that's our mothership, that's uh-huh. our thinking epicenter. Yeah. But it wasn't a function of the brain that it was capable. It wasn't because of the brain that holo- that the holographic surgery worked. It's because the theory of holographs work or holograms work. But yeah, and then that tied in with like that got into the whole like particle physics of it all, which basically means that two protons can be very close to each other. And then um, if they get if they have the same weight, Mm -hmm. so if they're spinning at the exact same um, uh, speed and direction, they become twins more or less. And you can separate those two protons by any space and time. Quantum entanglement. Exactly. Yeah. But that's what that is. So there's a that's reality. Ghosts. Yeah, it's ghosts. That's ghosts. That's ghosts because half of it's that's ghosts. You, you, oh, you, you get it now. That's ghosts. There, yeah. <laughs> you, do, you do some surgery down in your basement. You get two protons pissed off. You They're, separate them. Yeah. I feel like that's yeah, ghosts. I, I, I feel. How do you feel, Ian? I'm, yeah. I'm not discounting the, the, the research you've done, but I feel like it's it's not responsible for us to have these conversations without a without a physicist here. Sure. I yeah. mean, you know, the, you're when you're talking about particle physics, like that's just the the words that I just said are just like googleable like easy yeah. words, you know? Yeah. If you're talking about like the theory of it all, totally agree with you. Like But you know. yeah, I had I had a friend I had a friend tell me about quantum entanglement and it's very interesting. It's very interesting it's very and it's very confusing and it, you can't explain it. You can it's science can't explain it. Yeah. That's the big thing. Like of course I can't explain it. I'm dumb Rachel, but like <laughs> science can't explain it, which yeah. is like we're going to call dumb science? No. I love your full name. Dumb yeah. Rachel. Thank you. Yeah. Dumb Thank you. Rachel. <laughs> Only my mom calls me that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, okay, that's, I. you know, it's so funny because like all the shit that happened this year, I did totally forget about the whole, like the, the UFO? US Navy UFO videos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was terrible. That shit was crazy. But also like there, there is the argument that, you know, all the stuff that we've seen like with like Area 51 and, you know, even the Navy video, it could also be said that, that you know, the U.S. government mm-hmm. uses aliens, quote unquote aliens, mm-hmm. as a cover for actual secret work that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like all those things like flying saucers and whatever, they could could be experimental crafts that were made by humans, but they just use the cover of aliens or... Or, you know, un- it's unexplained. We don't know what it is to just cover for like an actual just government sure. made project. That's fair. 
That's fair. I, I mistrust th- the government just as much as I believe in aliens. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. that's fair to me. So that's that. I mean, that's always kind of been that's always kind of been the argument of like, well, OK, yeah, people saw that thing, but it's maybe it was just a thing that was actually man-made. Scarier to me but for I mean, some reason. But I mean, the science yeah. that's I mean, the technology that was on display with what those those videos were showing was insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you had like this little like thing that looked like a grain of rice that suddenly accelerated like a hundred times faster than anything else. Like would just change direction immediately. And yep. No plane can do that. Yes, like aliens. So Yeah. One yes. could say one could say aliens. Did you say aliens scare you more than anything else? Yes. Is it because they're intelligent? It's because they're physical. Because it's like, so the thing with, with the thing with <laughs> ghosts is like, you don't know what they're capable of. You don't know the rules. However, they are ethereal. They are, you mm-hmm. know, e- extra, right? They're, well, so are aliens. But with <laughs> aliens, they're like physical things uh-huh. that have technology that can do things. Mm-hmm. So it's like a ghost is in my room and it's banging on the ceiling. That's scary. But what's scarier is, oh, all of a sudden I'm taken out of my room physically. Mm. I'm, you know, probed or whatever. And then I'm sent back to my room and a big flash of white light happens and I don't remember it. That's worse to me. That's much worse. That's worse to me. (laughs) So that's why I'm very scared of aliens. Well, I have a whole thing about why I'm scared of aliens for real. But um, I don't. We don't have to get into it if it's not. Why? Yes, get into I'm, it. I'm dying the next. Okay, get into it. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, so I am calling out my mom on this, but she knows. So are we all familiar with the movie Signs? Yeah. Let's let's also keep in mind. Tommy grew up in Florida, so whatever alien he might have seen could have just been a Florida man. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, and yeah, I I have I have I have seen something. I will get into that. Okay. Uh, so Jesus. yeah. Um. Oh, man, I am a little paranormal baby. Yeah, I didn't realize. Baby. I didn't realize. My mom saw the the poster, like the movie poster, for signs, or she saw a commercial for it, or something, and she thought, mm, "I'm gonna take my ten or eleven year old son to the movie theater to see the movie Signs." <laughs> sure. We're in the theater. She looks around. I'm the only child. Sure. Hmm. And so, uh, yeah, about. I don't know, 20 minutes in, she realizes this is the wrong thing to do to my son. But we stayed and yeah, we watched the It's not a fun movie. alien romp. No, no it's not. Uh, I will forever now look at roofs of buildings at night <gasps> because of that imagery <sighs> and signs of like the, yeah. the thing standing oh, on the- Oh, I hated <laughs> that. I hated that scene. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'll never go to Mexico and just look down an alleyway. Oh you my know, God. There's, I like, don't children. that. Don't, uh, <laughs> The the yeah. In that guy. In that guy. Yeah, like the freeze frame. Okay, so I leave that movie theater. Okay, having thought about aliens, but never really thought about aliens. So I'm like broken now. That how that old was are you? A, ten. Ten, probably wow. ten or eleven. I, I mean, I, it's somewhere in there. <laughs> so my mom texts my dad, and she's like, "Yeah, so that was a very scary alien movie, and our son's kind of." Um, <laughs> might be a forever so, thing. Might be a forever thing. <laughs> and so because because my father is the oldest of five children, uh. he decides it would be very fun oh. to hide in my room. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. I know. Your so, dad is my dad. <laughs> okay, yeah, your great. dad's my dad too. <laughs> okay, great. I love this. And oh. so my dad jumps out of my room <laughs> and he doesn't say boo. And he doesn't say, what he says is, aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and I peed a little bit. And I was so damn scared. So anyway, that That's was the- scariest thing, because aliens would say that if they would jump <laughs> out of you. Human. Uh, yeah, so that was, that that really like sent it all home in my brain. So from then on, I was like, uh-oh, aliens, right? Yeah. So then cut to college. I'm with uh, three other friends, one of which is in the back seat with me. Mm. We are driving at 1 a.m. ish. I and don't know, you're something looking like that. at rooftops. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're on a very small little scary road thing. Yeah. It's like, it's well, it's not small. It's like I-95, but it's the part of 95 where it's just trees. Uh-huh. So we're, we're technically driving up to Georgia to see St. Vincent in concert. I look out of the, I'm on the right side. And there's like no seat. lights, right? No there's lights. There's no street lights. It's nope. just tree canopy it's it's the lights of, of the like ca- headlights exactly <laughs> um yeah <laughs> and so i look over to the car that is pulling up next to us to you know they're going a little bit faster than us 
And as it pulls up, I look over, the dashboard like radio light was on. So it's lit from like under, like whatever the, the alien that was driving the car <laughs> was lit from like kind of under and like from the side. So it wasn't lit in a way where I could see its features because it's more of a silhouette thing. And so like, sure, it's a weird silhouette. It's not an alien, but I had that like, feeling that like tummy feeling where you go like <gasps> where your animal instincts kick in and it's like you gotta run that's not good and so i had that feeling looked at it by the way don't want to say grasshopper shaped but I, like picture picture you know a person driving a car and you're seeing them from the side the wrist joint was not in the right spot it was like halfway down the arm so long hands or something the head was bizarrely small on top of a like neck thing and like hanging over. It's like as if- as, Was is there it... not a Comic-Con that was going on? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I wish. Somewhere nearby. <laughs> I need to research that because if that relieves me of this memory, I'll do and it. And Homeboy was driving the car? That's so what you, I'm like, saying. You're saying an alien was driving like a Toyota Corolla That's through what I'm the saying. middle of the night in Florida. That's what I'm saying. The dude was wearing skin but, suits. But I, <laughs> so I have the, the, the thing that makes it all horrible. Um, is I have that horrible feeling and I look I look away and I'm like, okay, I couldn't have seen that. There's no way I saw that. There's Was there no way. anyone in the car with you? Yes, there yeah. were two people, uh, two people in the front, one in the back with me. And I, of course, look over to my friend who is next to me and she's going, um, um, and I'm like, and I'm like, wait, did you just, she's like, did you just see the alien? We're like, ah! <laughs> and so, and yeah, and so, so. you guys followed it, right? No, no. Uh, so we end up, we end up at the motel that we're staying at and we both get a pen and pad out and draw what we saw and it's the same thing. No. So, so don't know what that was, but. Are you sure it wasn't like, maybe it was like, you know, maybe the, there was like an extermination company mm -hmm. that was like just shooting a commercial mm -hmm. where like a guy was dressed up as like a grasshopper. Uh -huh. And then he <laughs> yeah. was like, and then he was like, he going driving back from the commercial shoot, yeah. He, but he, uh, but he, he did, couldn't did, take the clothes off. Yeah, he, he didn't, and he didn't have off. a jaw, and his wrists yeah. were oh, wrong. He didn't have a jaw. Uh, he didn't have a jaw. <laughs> to the people who are <laughs> listening to this, they're all doing the uru thing and, and touching their fingertips together. <laughs> it couldn't be. <laughs> no. Like I know that it's so funny that we're sitting here. Like, of course, it was a grasshopper person, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to wear the weird suit for some reason, mm -hmm. maybe I'd also drive through the night in Florida, freak people out from the car. Right? Shrink your head and Cause like, what, your I mean, joints. what kind of car was it? Was it a I, nice car? I, I can't say that I remember the car. It wasn't anything fancy. It, that's all I know. It Something wasn't an very old, unassuming. it wasn't like a, exactly. It wasn't a rundown car and it wasn't a fancy car. It was just a car. Oh my God, that reminds me of Men in Black. Not the movie. I was gonna say, movie. did it ask for sugar water? Not the movie, <sighs> the thing. Oh, the actual Men in Black? Yes, thank you, yes. Tommy. Yeah. Thank you, Tommy. I've the, the, you've seen that strange video that was taken of the, there's a, there's a, the, like a camp, like a uh, security camera footage of these two men. Do you want to take suits. this one? No, please do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I like how we're like, you know the story. Do you want to tell <laughs> it? Uh, they, I think there was a UFO sighting of some kind or some kind of thing that would draw these, but two identical men that are black suits. in black suits that are bizarrely tall. There's like something off about the shape of the body. Um, but they both come in to, I believe, a hotel. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the rest of the story. Can you take it from here? I just know that that happened. That is that the story? Oh, it happened. There's there's so many stories like this. Like, okay, go, there's please. basically the men in black. The idea of the men in black is just that they're ba they're like uh, paranormal police, right? In some way, and anytime some uh, paranormal activity happens, they come and try to correct any sort of like ripple effect that may have happened in the world. And there there's some more nefarious ideas of what they could be. They're associated with black eyed children, yes. which are hybrid alien exactly. children. Yeah. Tommy, I just love you. you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, they come yeah. in and then they, they it's like they put the briefcase down and then they disappear. It's like this that's kind of the the move. Uh people who said that they've seen men in the men in black, uh, they describe them as having very light lilac skin um mm -mm. and yep mm -mm. and uh black eyes oh god it just freaks me out and you know mm -hmm. i i don't i just would prefer to live in a world where people could be wearing skin suits like yeah. i want to live in this world i know that doesn't sound right but no but me too yeah. it's exciting it's exciting are you looking up men in black right now yeah 
<laughs> yes, 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 you are. <laughs> kind of. Uh, for those uh, listening, Ian on his laptop is scrolling through tons of photos of Men in Black. And as you would expect, most of them have that big red circle. Or the red on, arrow. Or the red arrow to point. These are Men in Black. And they're, yeah. they're I mean, you can I... see them throughout history, too. Like, there are pictures of the Men in Black from the ni- like late 1960s and mm-hmm. stuff. There's also... Um, I don't know the painting, so I'm going to sound like a dum-dum who doesn't know anything, but there is a very old painting from Renaissance or something, and there is a UFO in it. They Mm -hmm. painted a UFO in the corner. There's UFOs in cave paintings as well, in cave art. Yeah. So, (laughs) aliens are real. (laughs) I don't know what you guys Do you believe not, Kevin? (sighs) Okay. That's a yes to me. Put me on the spot. I don't want to put you on the spot. I just, like, need to understand the perspective that aliens don't exist because, like, the universe exists. Fundamentally, sure. there's other life. Right? I, 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 Fermi's paradox is the is the one I always refer to. So that there probably is other life out there. It's just the universe is so so huge. Right. The odds of us running into something within that amount of time is crazy. But then again, what do I know? I'm just the guy who films a podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do we know? You're more than that. Look at you. us. <laughs> uh, you're watching the Men in Black video. I see. Oh, that one. You're just like, that's I mean, two guys. They have two guys in, <laughs> in black suits. Spooky. Why, well, why do they choose the dress like in, in Western suit fashion? I think it's fashion. The, probably the only, it's the, it's the only thing that could like keep all their arms in. Yeah, or some, something intergalactic like space cowboys. So y'all believe in aliens. I, I, I believe in them. I think they exist. I don't know if they're here, but I'd say, I don't know. I don't know everything. All right, so let's move on to this next question because I'm properly spooked, especially after that fucking weird story. Of That's crazy. Yeah. Cricket guy. <laughs> yep. This one actually surprised me. Uh, Get it. That surprised um, me. <laughs> they. Uh, this question is, have you ever used a Ouija board? <gasps> 15% of you said yes. 84% of you said no. So ill-advised. I yeah. like cannot, like both of us are like, don't do that. Mm-mm. But guess what? Don't do that. Guess who has used a Ouija board? No. Kevin. No, you're not allowed on any more ghost hunts. What? Kevin doesn't believe in ghosts. Like he doesn't hunt. believe in aliens, and but You've he believes in using a Ouija board. A Ouija board. It was, tra- it was what, what's the company that makes it? Hasbro or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Don't would, use a Ouija board. I was don't. a kid. I didn't know what it was. Oh, I thought it was just fun. Don't take him on a thing. He's gonna, no, he's I gonna won't. You're gonna I didn't bring it. anything. I was, anyways. He's going to bring your demons So have you, with Ian, you. used a Ouija board? I think so. What? Why? Just for fun. See? It's not fun. I think so? I mean, like, I don't know. We just wanted, I mean, it's. it was that whole thing where you're like, huh, okay, all right. Well, somebody's definitely moving this. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Okay. If it's we like, didn't, like, set up candles and shit. Like. We just busted it out and like sat down in the middle of a room. Like, did you hold hands? In broad daylight. No. Then you're fine. You're yes, fine. As long as you didn't like create hands. the circle. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Because you have to break the circle if you create the circle. If you don't break the circle, Kevin. I, uh, you're then... bound forever. And you no, have to say you goodbye. Just, to you buying to say Milton goodbye. Bradley products. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Milton Bradley. <laughs> no, Ouija boards are uh, 10 out of 10. Don't mess with them. Yep. yep. Aren't they just like a cardboard yeah if you i mean you know a ghost is just a fart in the wind if you believe that what kind of powers what kind of powers would this mass-produced cardboard box like Mm -hmm. have like is it is it just is it just in your beliefs is it the ritual of conjuring something yeah so it's 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 the people getting together that do a certain thing a certain way mm-hmm. and the spirit's like, oh. Yeah, it's like the power of intention. Like it, whenever people um, send in videos when they're like, I went on a investigation and they walk into the room and they're like, ghost, if you're here now, show yourself. Like if you're asking for it, then they'll give it to you, baby. So with a Ouija board, like you are asking for it mm-hmm. and they're gonna give it to you. So like- Just with, like DMX. Yeah, yeah, ghost go and give it to you. The problem with a Ouija board, Ouija board, uh, is that you can't control what comes through. Mm-hmm. If you, again, prefaced if you believe in this kind of thing. Mm. If you don't, you're probably not putting that much energy into it anyway. But you have no control over what comes through and any medium, any like I speak to dead people person who tells you that they can control that is lying to you. So basically what you're doing with a Ouija board is just saying, hey, anything, anything that wants to come through, come through. We're we're welcome. We're well, you're welcomed here. And if you don't properly close it, which is you got to like break the bind and you have to say goodbye and then close the board. It's very polite. Then, then you're inviting it into your life. 
So, and again, like it might be an intention thing. It might be a manifestation thing, but I choose not to test the spirits. Very interesting. See, I experienced it. I thought it was more like a magic eight ball. I thought you just ask it questions and like shake it up. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> you I shook the board. You just shake it up a bunch of ghosts. <laughs> shake the board saying, will I get, will I have sex <laughs> Pretty much. tomorrow? Who, who does, who does Susie like? And then, Will you know. I kiss? Will I kiss somebody ever? ever? It just it says spells potato. Out, no. <laughs> no. No with a heart. No. <laughs> no. It says no, honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You've never, you've never. Right, Tommy? No. So Good. here's why. Regardless of belief or whatever, let's say it's a 0.001% chance using a Ouija board will curse me forever or mm. unleash a demon. <laughs> that is too much of a chance. Okay. So I will never, ever, a Ouija board comes out and someone's like, I'm leaving the bil- I'm leaving the building. It's over. I have had a Ouija board in front of me mm. for a sketch that I filmed once. But we, we, there was no circle. It was kind of a thing. And yet still, me and the producer person that I was working with, we keep giving the board back to each other because we're like, I think the only way to get rid of a board is to bury it. Is that correct? Yeah, you're sp- I mean, you know. Yeah, you're there's no, to yeah, bury it. But either way, we're it. like, I don't want to burn it because what if that pisses off the ghost? The yeah. same thing with me in my picture, with my painting. I'm like, I don't want to burn it because what if that's like yeah. upsetting it? So I'm just kind of like leaving it in my closet. For you now. have to like spirit, you have to like spirit wand it. Like you have to pass it on. I'm so. not, I don't know anyone who wants the painting. Well, find an enemy. <gasps> <laughs> Can I give it to James Bond? Do you think he'll take it? Yes. Do you believe in possession? Yes and no. I think that's definitely a, you gotta believe it to let it happen. Yeah, kind yeah, of a yeah. Thing. And I don't know about that, but apparently I believe in a succubus. So. Uh, well, at least it's uh, happening to you. I know. Mm-hmm. Hey. Okay, so Ouija board. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like, just don't mess with it anyway, because either, either you believe it's bullshit mm-hmm. or you believe it's real and it's dangerous. So. Maybe just don't buy one. I love that summary. <laughs> That's exactly correct. Yeah. It sounds like there's no upside to a Ouija board, they're so why even bother? They're not fun. Like, they're just not fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. why? You, you know? Just play spin the bottle, kids. Yeah, then you'll then you'll get An to adults. kiss someone ever. That's the way to, to, yeah. kiss, to kiss someone yeah. ever. Exactly, because that's all we ever <laughs> want to know is like, will I be kissed? When am I gonna kiss? When am I gonna kiss? Please, ghost. When am I gonna kiss? I don't know. Now it's so we're in the we're in the age of Rona. Spin the bottle's pretty dangerous now. That's actually very true. Living wow. on the edge. Living on of the dance glory. floor. It's a dance moms thing. Do you believe in dance moms? I wholeheartedly believe in dance moms. Mm. I'm possessed by dance moms. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you could be Abby possessed Lee. by Abby. Oh my God. Would you? I would be a powerhouse. <laughs> That I would I would be unstoppable. I wish we could like get her for you, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm Tommy's sh- now? Tommy's ultimate hero. <laughs> now she she's available. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's ultimate hero is Abby from Dance Moms, uh, and and I know she's she's had a lot of issues and she's got some work to do. So I know that she's had problems. We love Don't an think. anti-hero. She's an anti-hero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's e- she's very evil. But. <laughs> <laughs> But I love you, Abby. <laughs> if you're um, watching this, Abby. <laughs> if you're watching. So this last question uh, that we asked y'all is, do you think cryptids exist? So that's like Bigfoot, Loch Ness, Duende. I'm very interested as, in this As answer. you mentioned. Um, and d- don't peek. <gasps> oh. 45% of you said, what, what do you think? Do you think it's majority people not believing? Or yeah, believing? I think people don't believe in them. I'm going to say majority does not believe. Well, 45% say yes. That's a higher than I thought. Thirty nine percent say no. Okay. Oh sure. And fifteen percent said what the. F-? That's an option that I did sense. give. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, that does make sense. I, I feel like cryptids are like the. Mm, they're, they're silly. They it's are like, silly. It's like baby I mean, yeah. version. Yeah, it's like Loch Ness and stuff. Bigfoot. And you're like, oh, that's silly. Like, I don't know. I don't know. The, a couple of the videos that we get sent in for the show f- of the of Bigfoot footage mm. is terrifying. Like there's one of similar situation, but in the daytime, these four people are in a car and they're driving and you s- hear the kids in the back start screaming and they turn the camera around and there's something grotesque because that's what it is. It's uncanny. It's grotesque that it almost looks like a person and there's something chasing after them and like runs up to the car. It's very real. What? Like it's very real looking, I should say. I'm not the family, but it runs out. You check it out. Paranormal caught on camera every uh, Sunday on uh, Trap Channel. Um, and that Bigfoot laughed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I bet. Such a lark. So funny. Oh, I bet. Yeah, he ran up, like get out style, like ran up to the car and then like hard turned into the forest. 
Oh, straight up get out. Straight up get out. Harry so. get out. Yeah. And like more like Jeez. <laughs> you know. Have you seen the video of that um that uh goat attacking the the bicyclist? No. Is the goat like It's just like that. That's funny. Did the did the bicyclist choose to live deliciously? That's the you ever familiar it's like Jack's with, links. With that? that it's uh it's from the witch. The the VV witch the, oh, the, the, the witch yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. at the end the uh, well that's a spoiler I guess but it's it's been that long enough it's a meme mm-hmm. that the go- the goat's like would you like to live deliciously no I don't no, no, remember no, 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 no. that it's that's like, my number one fear of a goat of being a demon animals talking oh yeah <laughs> I know so you don't like Doctor Th- Doolittle <laughs> Eliza Thornberry not out. like that <laughs> I mean like chaos reigns like uh like um Antichrist or like mm-hmm. like this where they anything like uh, animorphs. Mm. Anything that animorphs? Yes, animorphs. I know it's anything that is a personification of an animal, like something that give it giving it human like qualities. That's my number one fear. Okay, I have I have a question. What? Because I feel like you might have some kind of answer. Mm. So when I was in Iceland, they had these like sort of like earth houses. So it was like this like old sort of dwelling that was built into like this rock. And it was like abandoned. There wasn't really any like signage or anything. We kind of like walked over there. And I I don't think we we weren't trespassing. But there was nobody else around there. At the entrance were some bones on the ground. (laughs) And they were like they were like bones, like these little bones. Yeah. And they were just kind of like placed at the entrance, Uh-oh. and I was just like, "Oh, Uh-oh. that's weird." And you I just like, an wa- <laughs> and I just like walked in. <laughs> Oops! I just like walked in, and it was all like wet and dark. You walked past the bones. Yeah. Where were the what? In where? How were the bones fashioned? Yeah, what was the shape? Yeah, what I mean, was the shape of the bones. They they seem like they're just kind of like placed there, but they like like in a straight line in front of the door, next to the door, next to it. So it wasn't a barrier; it was just like a little pile, like someone had some chicken. Not legs. like a pile, but it, there was just some like scattered bones. It seemed, mm. and mm. it was actively wet inside of the place. Yeah, because it's. I mean, it's, it's, the, the, it's very yeah, wet, yeah, yeah. Okay. but. Yeah, that sounds like a ritual or an altar, at least in certain beliefs. Well, so so then I walked in okay. and it was like really creepy and stuff. And there wasn't really anything to see in there, but it was like this really cool thing that was built into like this crack in this earth. So when we walk out and we kind of like walk up the hill and my friend is like walking in front of me. We're trying to get like another look at it because it seemed like there's maybe like another way in or something. Mm-hmm. We walk up the hill and and then I'm like walking up, but I'm like looking at the ground. I'm like, oh, shit. and there's just a dead, like decomposing sheep. Like, yeah, hi, right there. Yes, that is a ritual. <laughs> did it have all of its bones? It, I think so. Yeah, it was like. Did it look gutted, or did it look like it was just dead? It looked like it just kind of like it, it had like a, I think it had a tag like for its like because it was it seemed like maybe it got out of like its yeah. pen or something. But it looked like it just kind of like walked up the hill and was just like meh. Yeah, I mean, with with rituals and stuff like that, like that sounds like to me that sounds like a ritual. Like that sounds what it wasn't mo- what- in any sort of like specific place. You know, it wasn't like in it was some just kind of like clearing. It was just dead. It was just like up along the side of this like hill. But it, the bones is what like was super weird, and I was like, why would just some assorted bones be sitting here? But I guess you know animals die in places and and also there's certain things that like outside of the paranormal religiously there's certain i can't tell you which one but i know that if you put bones it's like a signifier of like a death protection Hmm. basically you're using death against itself so they put it to protect themselves kind of like um passover how uh, jews put the lamb's blood over their door so the angel of death would pass over their house kind of like that so very cute very cool when it comes to like ritual sacrifice of animals that's some bullshit like that may that's the stuff that makes me mad personally from someone who was not there at all and have just heard the story one <laughs> true, and a half true, times. True. Um, doesn't sound like a ritual to me. Sounds like there was a little pile of bones. Yeah, I think maybe little... there's just some Icelandic dude. He hit the KFC, then he drove out mm-hmm. to the countryside. Oh, they were that like, small? I don't remember how big they were. It was just really creepy. My brain paints pictures where there is none. Like if yeah. there's a blank canvas, like I'll give you, I'll give you a satanic ritual, sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you have a picture of it? Are you pulling out the bones? I, didn't take, I don't think I took a picture of the bones. Show me show them bones. Bit. It's like a jaw. Looks like a jawbone. Okay, you're sheep. gonna you're gonna sit here and tell me that's normal, Tommy. So right now, Ian just showed Tommy and Rachel the picture that he took. Just some teeth. It's like yeah, it's, it's a like jawbone. a lower jaw, of like a 
sheep or something. That's a ritual. I'm just saying. We're backtracking. That's the Vavitch. Sorry, that's the yeah. Vavitch. I'm just Put saying. That, that's a... That, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a wrong. witch's wrong. house. So it's wrong. I mean, it's just like imagine just like a really creepy looking I mean, I thought it was really cool. I it's think beautiful. these 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 earth houses that are in Iceland are really, really cool. But this one was built into like this giant rock. And so it actually goes inside. Mm-hmm. How old was it? I don't know. I mean, that's... Probably goes back to sixteen hundreds, maybe. I'm not sure. Because that's the thing about old dwellings like that is that they also believed in um, some sort of ritual. Like they didn't have science in the way that we have science. And so certain things they thought that they could like ritual away. Like this ritual of putting bras on a fence post. Yes, that's the spookiest ritual. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Before we finish, we have a a shoot dude. Is this a spooky shoot dude? No, you know, there wasn't a spooky shoot. Well, all shoot dudes are spooky in some regard, right? That's true. No, I spooked That's true. All right. Well, then let's let's do the shoot, dude. Shoot, shoot, dude. 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 Shoot, That was good. Thank you. This one comes from Joseph. I was the type of kid who pulled all kinds of shenanigans growing up and bless my poor mother for having to deal with me. So we were at a Sam's Club shopping for whatever at that time and I had seen a toy I really wanted. I think it was like a Mighty Morphin's Power Ranger toy or something because that's what the kids do when they're shopping. Kids be shopping. They want stuff they won't get. So I begged my mom and got the typical mom answer of no, you don't need that. But Rotten Me was not having that answer. So in the middle of a somewhat crowded Sam's Club, I shouted, help me, help me, somebody's trying to steal me. And all eyes were on my mom at this point, who was just dumbfounded that I would even have the nerve to say something so stupid. That's when store security came and took us back into the security area to try to sort all of this out. Several calls later, police being involved and the mess getting cleared up all the while my mom being embarrassed to the core of raising such a rotten child. I still didn't get the toy I wanted. Shoot, dude. Shoot, dude. Shoot, dude. Shoot, dude. Oh, Joseph. Kids. Yeah. Yikes. Don't do anything. Kids. That's like, Help me, that's... help me. Somebody's trying to steal me that's all because so... I couldn't get a toy. The, but like, where does, where did he get that idea? Was that the was that like the mom being like, if someone ever steals you, you're gonna <laughs> scream, I'm being stolen. Yeah. And so he's like, got it. That this will get me the toy. That's some evil <laughs> that's some evil kid sh- Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes kids do things that are like, that's exceptionally evil. Yeah, that was that's good. <laughs> they don't know consequence. Damn. You know? He's still not allowed to go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Dude. He's Did you guys so ever hungry. pull anything like that when you were younger? God no. No, I was a good little was kid. One time kid. I said the F word in front of my mom when I was a little kid and I like immediately started freaking out because I knew that that was not okay. I mean, I think I think because of the level of remorse that I showed instantly upon saying that word, I don't I don't remember being punished for it, but I remember being very scared of being punished. Were you me. punished much as a kid? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like the, there was always the threat of punishment and I was a pretty good boy because I was a younger brother. So oh. I usually let my sister kind of like figure out what was what was the not good thing to do and then try to learn from that. One time I was making a scene at a Red Lobster and my parents <laughs> said, if you keep making the scene, we're gonna go home. And I was like, Ugh. and I kept making the scene and they took me home. And we, we only had biscuits and I learned that moment. Are you sure your boy. parents just didn't do that so they can get free biscuits? And then they put mm. the blame on you. They're like, let's make them act real weird. We're so sorry. Yeah. Get those free biskies. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. They just want some biskies. <laughs> they just wanted some biskies. You want some biskies. Some cheesy biskies. Well, guys, that was that was the shoot, dude. Send us your shoot dudes at shootdude at smosh.com. That's S-H-O-O-T-D-O-O-D at smosh.com. Um, and you might be seeing some shoot dude merch pretty soon. Oh my God, you dropped the bomb. We might be. Should I not drop the bomb? No, I think you can. You're the social expert. Yeah, you can You're drop the market it. market in person. Drop it up. I mean, I'm just going to drop a little hint. Shoot dude. Working on some shoot dude We have stuff. a lot in the pike. We have yeah. a lot coming up merch wise. You Ooh, say in doggy. the pike? Yeah, it's pike or pipe. 
Oh, interesting. I know. Mm -hmm. They don't know which one it we, is. We had to look it up during a meeting once. We, they, did you really? That was it. It completely. Yeah, yeah the meeting completely stopped because we were like, Pike? Pike? And then, yeah. Could be both. So anyway, right. there's merch in the store. Merch in the store. Merch there is the merch store. in the store. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Thank you for just the spookiest, <laughs> most... And the, there's some. The, I'm worried. I'm worried for both of you guys. Me too. Yeah. Not for your men. Not like I that I don't well. believe your thing. I'm worried about you mentally, <laughs> Tommy. I'm legitimately worried about um my little my little sucky. Your little yeah, sucky. My little sucky. I I think it's <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Did it did it start happening after you brought that creepy animatronic horse home? No, 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 no. Mm. Uh, That's that, good. I wouldn't the, want you to throw that out. Me neither. I love that. I love Everyone it. loves it's it. Its ear fell off yesterday. Oh no! Oh yay! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hitting puberty. <laughs> <laughs> just limbs keep falling off. <laughs> that didn't happen to you guys. You just you just have a little hole on I'm the like, side of your head. Oops! <laughs> you grow a new one. Yeah. Uh, wow. Just like teeth. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'm scared too. I'm doing an investigation on the first. All right. Well, really? Yeah, of Queen Mary, but they're shutting it down. Oh, Queen for Mary. me and me and two other girls on the show, they're gonna shut down the boat, and we're gonna come do an investigation. And I am spooked, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, Smosh Games went, did the Queen Mary thing a couple years ago, and they were they're positively spooked. And Mari chipped her tooth. Oh no, mm -hmm. where tooth, dude? I think I think she chipped her tooth there in mm. Queen Mary. Oh my god, they're, we'll run, they're running thing. around being dumb. No, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. You I'm, gonna try have, it. I'm gonna have EVPs. Ooh. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I wish you the best of beeps and boops mm -hmm. on the Queen Mary. Thanks, Ian. And all your future endeavors. I hope that creepy lady in your stairway goes away. Oh. Tommy. Thank you. Um, thank you guys so much. This has been an illuminating experience. And I hope you guys learn something or are spooked. Ooh. 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 Have a spooktacular Halloween. Ooh, sucky. Ooh, sucky. <laughs> <laughs>